Hello everyone, this is Ultar, and this segment is here to let you know that after about a year of producing content for Offworld Training Company, Mohawk Games contracted me out to do some QA consulting work for them. This video was made during the time that contract was active. Thank you for listening, please enjoy the video. Hello everyone, and welcome to game number one in our best of three series between Game Slayer and Year End. It's going to be a semi-final of our release tournament for Offworld Trading Company. What in the world? Glad we're getting these fun maps. Yeah, this could prove an interesting one. Again, a little bit short of aluminium. It's awkward at best. At best. I really like the scavenger found, though, I think. <laughs> so does Year End. Oh, man, <laughs> crushing two of those. I like it. <laughs> no, no scavenger for anybody else. That's that's a good found. It, that is a good found, I think. I'm not so sure I like the debt, but... Scientific well, I mean, founded. I think it was quite definitely the best found on the map. Game Slayer is going to go with Scientific to try and fight it. it says, brave. yeah, I think that's game. Well, if you think like that, it's almost guaranteed to be so. Uh, he hasn't lost yet, has he? No, game's not over by a long shot. Just, just began. I don't like founding Scientific here. I think that's no. actually a pretty big mistake. But we'll see if he can pull through. I think he probably would have had to go robot, wouldn't he? I think robotic would have been the correct decision here for sure. Try and keep up in upgrades the best that you can. Just hold on until that late game. The off the black market is acceptable, but not fantastic this game, I would say. Mutiny EMP, your primary two aggressive tools here, and then adrenaline boosts. That are very usable, but you have to be careful with. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's okay. The black market's acceptable, but nothing special there. Oh, yes. Did he just core sample those aluminiums? He did use the Mark core sample and got some aluminium. Excellent. I'd call that a good move. Good use of the core sample that we almost never see. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and there's a double geo as well that. <laughs> I would think he might be <laughs> misclick. I mean, he's got two claims left. He could easily take one of those geotherms. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to. I think he needs to. Well, I think he needs to. I mean, just deny them to Yaran because I'm sure Yaran would love to get his hands on them. That would certainly help him out with his debt. Cheap steel, too. I mean, Game Slayer, of course, starting with no debt. He has the option. Has the option of heading into these. He chooses not to, though. He commits to some glass kilns instead, which is acceptable. No warehouses. This game driving the price up, but it did start at a nice solid 160. So mm. those will be making money for the short term, at least. At least it should get him uh, an upgrade level or two. But uh, again, he's chasing the scavenger, isn't he? Your hands off to a good start there. Yeah, a strong start for Yurand. Just getting into the life support resources rather than attempting the glass market. Yurand also making an effort to hold up this silicon price against Gameslayer, but Gameslayer had partially insulated himself from this. Purchasing up silicon as well, just making sure he pre-bought all of that to use in his glass kilns. Yeah, that's a good move. A very good move. It's a nice way to secure HQ level 3 and potentially going to move into possibly some silicon there. To help make some of this money back. Yeah, it's a long way away though, isn't it? It is. It indeed it is, but it's still very usable, I think, this game. Extra claim, nobody's touched the double geo yet. Which I think is a big mistake out of year end, I'll be honest. I do not like that decision from him at this stage of the game. Game Slayer's gonna pick up that auction, too. Where's it gonna go? Hey. It's gotta have one of them, isn't he? Gotta have one of the geos. I mean, I think so, but oh, another core sample going on. Trying to get some closer silicon and hopefully some better silicon only finds two lows. How long has that core sample animation been there? Because I don't think I've literally ever seen it before. And I've used core samples. I think there's some work going on with the core sample. Uh, sorry, I'm saying he's going to have a 60 second. Oh, and Game Slayer has taken those two Both of geothermals. Them. Both. Bam! Thank you very much. He'll have those. Dangerous use of this core sample, though. I don't know if that was worth the cooldown. 
because now he's going to take a long time securing these geos if he wants to be safe against Niran's black market. Yes, he's going to have to get a goon squad on him pretty sharpish, isn't he? I think so. Yeah, and I think going for a boost there. What's he going to be boosting? Those wind turbines for sure, I'd say. EMP lands, though. Not going to get the boost out just yet. No, nope, he's going to hold that, isn't he? Nothing else really to be boosted. No, nothing else really making good money at this point. Like, the water is his best option, but you boost that and you're just going to flood the market very quickly. Yeah. And uh, Yeran needs to... Oh, wow. he's... he's got a spy down, so he knows exactly what's going on with those geothermals. There's no dynamite, sadly, so he's going to have to EMP them sharpish. Uh, yeah, I think an EMP could definitely be a good option here. Just lock out your opponent from that like 240 steel, 80 aluminum he's committed to those tiles. And then, of course, later on, you do have access to those mutinies. But Yiran, just going straight for the mutiny, sees that Gameslayer never even thinks about defending. Gameslayer getting super greedy with this adrenaline boost, punished instantly. That's what you like to see. <laughs> that is a good, good move. I mean, Yiran had to do that, otherwise he was toast. That... I mean, too... <sighs> Gameslayer right, says good. no. Oh no, Game Slayer is not the one holding on to the boost, that's good. But still, I think this core sample, I think this core sample was actually a really bad decision. Couldn't afford the black market cooldown, I'd say. No, it did, uh, a slowdown strike. got him into trouble there. Definitely. And suddenly, yeah. debt's been turned on its head here, and only 65,000 in it. Game Slayer, 113. Yeah, Yerand has really worked the black market well. He's got shut out of the double geos, but he says, right, that's fine. I'll go back to my wind turbines, boost them, and he's really got himself out of trouble. Absolutely. Really done well. Good, good nice use of the black market by oh, Yerand. Fantastic. That's exactly what kept him alive this game, I'd say. Yeah, it could, at one point I thought he was... If he hadn't done something with those geothermals, he was in big trouble. He was dead, because Game Slayer would have killed power within a day easily absolutely and without making power money there's no way your own could pay his debts off and get back into the game yeah starting with that huge amount of debt definitely a risk but your gonna manage to work with it game slayer we kind of discussed how it was gonna be important to take these geotherms slowly couldn't afford to go for both of them at once and you can see exactly why it's not that he didn't have the money to do it but he simply He's just didn't have the time He's D debt now. I well, I don't. He, I oof. two thousand away. Double. He's just barely he touching it. He slipped into D, then he was back to C. Now he's back to D, and soon it, it's coming up to midnight. Yeah, that interest is on the way. Going to tick for thirty percent if he's still in this D level of debt, and I don't see how he gets out of it. It is ouch. Something like sixty thousand dollars. Fifty-two thousand. Yeah. Yep. Fifty-two. Quarter of a million wow. in debt. This is pretty standard for Game Slayer. Sometimes he's ahead. <laughs> sometimes he's not. I would say it's basically game over for him. I can't. Can't really see how he can come back. I don't Ooh. believe Game Slayer got frozen through Defended. I believe that freeze came down in the moment that Yirand was losing control of that geothermal plant. So, geo that, so he still has it, line. freezes it. Yeah, they're frozen, and Yirand's turbines are boosted, so... Hmm. Yeah, Yirand in no dead, that, boosted that, turbines. That upgrade, I'd call a mistake, but, I mean, it's not like it's going to matter this game. Your opponent's in that quarter million debt. D levels, huge interest rates. Yaren can basically do whatever he wants this game, and as long as he's the game, still game paying Slayer's attention, dead. Game Slayer's just going to die. yaren has got $70,000. He only needs to buy sixty or $70,000 $70, of shares. I mean, it's... Yeah. Why, is, why is he not buying a stock? Laziness. Yeah. He obviously wants a shiny pleasure dome first. Yeah, I mean, you gotta have the pleasure dome to celebrate your victory in, right? And then the Kim Labs just look fancy, so obviously you have to build those too. Plus, you just kinda wanna savor the moment, right? 
Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's going to be a good party at the end. Game Slayer also going to get aggressive here, but he, the trick is when your stock price is half of your opponent's and you have a quarter of the money, it turns out there's really no edge for you to exploit going forward in the game. He did, though, put something like 30% on his shares. Not that it made one iota of difference. No. Not not even a little bit. Game Slayer no. immediately out of that one. We know Game Slayer doesn't like to dwell on his losses. Mm, can't, can't blame him for that one. That was a bit of a turning point with those two double GAs. Mm -hmm. if, he could have held, if he could have held them, which he may have been able to hold them if he hadn't been messing around, like you said, getting those silicons, uh, it would have gone a completely different way, I think. Absolutely. I think that was the crucial mistake this game. The aluminum core sample was great, meant that he didn't have to ship from super far away, got quick access to the resource, saved his life with it realistically. Maybe shouldn't have committed two claims there. That's the only problem mm -hmm. issue I would take with that particular line. But then the silicon core sample I would describe as utterly unnecessary, and he desperately needed the black market cooldown in order to survive yeah. taking the geotherms. Exactly right. Exactly. He needed going squads more than he needed silicon. But hey ho. That's the way the cookie crumbles. It's true. Alright, well. Pretty classic debt spiral there. Ignore power for too long, don't secure it appropriately very very simply yeah. fall out of the game <laughs> yeah that's it and of course defending two geothermals against the scavenger player is always going to be an uphill battle anyway absolutely hello everyone and welcome to game number two in our best of three series between year end and game slayer year end taking game number one very effectively a very nice founding location for him founded quite quickly with a lot of debt but manages to pull through with strong use of the black market over Game Slayer and his double geotherms, this game's going to be quite different, I'd say. Yes, there's that scavenger, and then... Robotic colony founded. Alright, robot this time out of Game Slayer. Not going to get the aluminum he wanted. No, nope, or... that's gone. Ah, uh, yeah, that's just... I'm potentially, though, potentially that was already taken. Nah, Game Slayer says, well... Yeah, puts himself into a world of trouble very early on, I'd say. Can get to HQ2, though. That is crucial, this game. That is... Game Slay is already in serious trouble. Yeah, sets himself up not very well, this game, I'd say. This is almost one of those games when I would have been okay seeing a... Scientific... Scientist? Yeah, I was thinking that. That would have been acceptable, definitely. Up in that top right corner definitely would have been an option. Yeah. Yep, Instead, we're going to see a lot of shipping and very expensive power early on. Yeah, it's... How so many goon... No goon squads on the map. Which Geotherms. Be interesting. Uh, sorry, Geo... Did I say goon squads? Yeah. Geotherms. Yeah, no you're geotherms. good. We got you. But yeah, no Geotherms makes this really interesting to me because year -end, once again, founding with a large amount of debt in Game Slayer... I'm a little worried about his exact location because it means shipping is going to be quite expensive for him in terms of power. But if he can mm -hmm. get into these panels pretty quickly, things could get interesting. Yeah, if he can, yeah, if he can start right. making some power money, then he's going to be doing well. But Yiran's deaf. Oh, he needs to get some turbines down, I suppose. But he's got some good good spots to do it, but he needs to do it quickly. Does he though? Because there is, I mean, this game is black market. If you're if you're worried about power in particular, which power started off as the only double price resource this game, you've got EMPs against no geotherms, so your opponent has to rely on panels, basically. And then circuit overload and mutiny ready to go. Yeah. No. Nope. EMP already coming out from year end. That's fair enough. I'd like to see him follow that up at some point with a, goon, with a, a nuke. Except Where do you want the iron. nuke to go? On the high iron? I can understand that. I like in the, uh, the silicon, though. I wouldn't... But then again, uh, Yeran's going to be wanting to get into glass at some point, so maybe keep some cheap silicon around. Here come the turbines. No big surprise there. Power already very, very expensive. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's only going to keep going up, isn't it? Yeah. At the moment, anyway. At the moment, until these turbines come online. Yurand has done a good job of making sure to only build very, very cheap power buildings. He's only consuming 0.9 a second from all of his buildings combined. Uh, well, yeah, he had to, didn't he? Absolutely. I mean, just nice, good work from him, I'd say, getting into the farms instead of reactors, staying in the water market, all that sort of just minor detail can really, really help when you want to move into these wind turbines. That's it. It's just minimized his, his use of power. I hate those filthy bandits. Nope. Which also minimizes his debt, which is more important, probably. Gameslayer taking the 10k pirates. I don't know if that was even worth it, though. There is this concern where all these primary resources are effectively worthless that are flying through the sky. Yeah, that's a lot of money to pay just to steal a little bit of carbon. Certainly and is. Yerand is going to get a farm on that at some point, I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. So he... he can very easily expand into a triangle there. And of course, building a building on pirates knocks him down. I don't know if he'll do that in time, so much carbon being shipped through, but you're absolutely right that it is an option, based on that location. Yeah, I would like to see it just slightly, slightly more towards the carbon. But again, carbon at $7, it's... Four to two. Yeah. Yeah. You're in having a very easy time just making his way through his upgrades again, relying on these farms to buy the glass, and that's all he's really needed so far this game. That's it, slow and steady, he's in no rush. Game Slayer's I mean, two HQ levels behind, and well, he's struggling. Absolutely, that early EMP really hurting Game Slayer. Just knocking out his power, knocking out his steel mills, also took took the auction, kind of made sure that power wasn't a market that was available to him this game. I honestly think his best move would have been the double panel. Then maybe yeah. with a steel mill adjacent to it, just get goons down the best that you can early. Because at one point he had a panel down, was only 1.3k in debt. Could have easily pulled out of that, I think. Oh, definitely. Um, I just put in the one power down was a strange move, very strange move. Yeah, I think Game Slayer just showing a bit of his classic uh, difficulties with losing here. Just yeah, always gets distracted. Tilted it off, has not he? And just, uh, coming down and not grabbing that aluminium as well. I mean, that was a real kick in the teeth for him, I think. And he's putting a glass kiln down. Uh, Yaran needs to nuke his iron and then that'll be it. Yeah, Although just I, for one iron. So cheap though at the moment, iron. It's not. It is. Mass it's a very long-term play. The nuke, isn't it though? It is. But, but regardless, I think Yuran's just going to be happy to see no power coming down for Game Slayer. He's not paid through his debt yet, but power going down very slowly. It's uh, yeah, you're right there. It's it's not reducing as quickly as I'm sure they'd like. Well, certainly Game Slayer would like it cheaper. Definitely. You're not too worried about it, though. I mean, perfectly willing to pay 9k for an extra claim here. Game Slayer not even going to bid that up to 10, worried about his debt, it seems, right now. Game Slayer's oh, dreadful losing two, two power a second, which is $300 a second he's losing just on power, which is going to be even more as soon as the uh, night falls. Absolutely. Whereas year end, he's sitting very, very comfortably, got into just food, got into reactors, no problem for him whatsoever. Now easily HQ5 moving into those chem refineries. Yep, he's cruising, isn't he? Yeah, pretty pretty simple and straightforward stuff for year end so far. I actually just picked up a circuit overload, trying to keep this power price high, and there's a shortage on the way, which Game Slayer is not going to be happy about. Uh, oh, another kick in the teeth for him. That's a overload. Well, uh, he's, Yaran's going to save that, isn't he, till the morning, and then he'll bring it down onto those two panels that Game Slayer's got next to his uh, water. He yeah. his water tiles. Double panel's definitely going to be what's hit here, I think. Game Slayer is managing to hold on into this game and trying to keep up in upgrades, but of course, steel very expensive, and he's still a full HQ level behind. Going to yeah. take him 60,000 or so to get to that next level. 
Yeah, I mean, the only thing that he's in that makes him money at the moment is glass. And even that, that's $200 a second he's making on that, which is hardly anything. He's losing far more power. And he's doubling... Oh, what's he doing? He actually scrapped his solar panels, then added another solar panel out there. And he's now he's moving going... into... A metal mine? A couple yeah, of them? Yep. Yeah, yep, back to aluminum. Of metal mines. That's what wow. he's had to do. It just feels like he has to in response to this hacker ray play out of year end, it seems. Chemical shortage on the way. I believe this aluminum shortage, I think, was natural, though. <laughs> and, well, at least he's mutinied. These games lay his mutiny away. Okay, um, oh, but what's the point now? It's $15. Yeah, exactly. Yuran just holding that price up, saying, all right, get into this market. This is Yuran just doing almost a cubit style play here of just playing with his money, forcing his opponent to move around in markets in ways that he doesn't want to, make transitions that he doesn't want to, causing problems. Yeah. Game Slayer with the rather eloquent screw it concedes it out, and Yuran's going to take the series in a very clean 2-0. Wow, that's six. <laughs> surprising. Well, no, it, yeah, it's not surprising after seeing the games, but I don't think you'd have said at the start your end would go 2-0.